Hello, Virgo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Virgo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Virgo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we start with a five of pentacles. There's a lot of change. A lot of things are moving around. A lot of moving parts in your life right now, right? I feel like you're rearranging things. Um, Spirit showing me you rearranging a lot of furniture. Okay. Um, and maybe that's literal. Maybe you literally are right now redecorating your interior space. But are we talking about spiritually interior imagination in our own inner lives, right? As well as outside of ourselves. I feel like this card, while it sometimes talks about like money, woes and worries and concerns, some anxiety about the physical environment, it could be some anxiety about health and, you know, finances and stuff. I feel like this is really you manifesting. I feel like this is you rearranging your exterior environment to match what's going on inside, right? You're creating the world that you really are experiencing within you. And look at the bottom card we have is that nine, right? That's all about gain. That's about increase. That is about building up. Yeah. So in a very simple way, if you are experiencing money woes, the spirit is saying, yeah, that's all going to be it's all going to be fixed. Don't worry about that. But let's put this five of pentacles into some context. See, now there's the four. See, this is the home. This is that exterior, exterior um, uh, environment, right? This is that stable, kind of semi-stable, fourfold world. So we've got a five, we've got a four. We are creating stability out of all of this rearranging that we're doing. There's a reason why everything's moving around. There's a reason why all the parts move. That's how we create stability. And look at that. Four, five, six. This is maybe the, where we started. This is us saying, I'm going to rearrange my furniture. And this is what we end up with. Now, our room is, just by moving a couple of the couches around a little bit, look what you've created. That's stunning, right? It's, it's brilliant in, in literal, uh, literal meaning of brilliance. It's shining so brightly, you know. Oh, now, we're, now this is just getting ridiculous. Now we've got a two of pentacles. We've got all earth energy here. And we've got a little bit of the water energy with a Knight of Cups and a Six of Cups. So this is really, this is your way of expressing yourself, of finding more beauty. It's very feng shui here. It's very feng shui. Got an Eight of Wands, a Knight of Wands, a Queen of, of Pentacles, and a Prince of Cups. Um, fire, water, and Earth, Earth. Fire, water, and earth. This is really, this is a lot of good cards here that you have. The one thing that I do notice, which I think is quite significant, we don't have any major arcana energies here. You know? I think we had a reading for you a few weeks ago. Go back and check if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Where we literally had every card was a major arcana card. Now we have the opposite of that. And you want to know why? Because you're fully integrated with spirit. You are fully like united with that force. You're tapped in. That is a circuit that has been connected. Uh, it's been plugged in and it's not going anywhere. Spirit now is, the, is, is what's holding everything together. Spirit is the love, the glue that holds all of these cards together. Spirit is the table. Spirit is this entire room, this entire universe. Yeah. So I don't feel that there's any... Um, I feel like you've made a lot of accomplishments with your spiritual work. You know, usually we'll see a major arcana, maybe one, two, three. If we see a lot, sometimes it means that we're going through an intense period of spiritual growth. 
at that, and then the readings kind of tend to be that way, very spiritual readings, all about the inner transformation, the growth, that spiritual work, that initiation, right, into ourselves, into spirit. I feel like you've done a lot of that, and now you're at that point where you can kind of take a little bit of a break, right, a little bit of a breather from all that spiritual work, and now change your environment to reflect what's going on within you. This is spiritual attainment, this unity that you feel inside. Now your environment is going to reflect that. We see the card of reflection, six of cups. That three that's within you is reflected in the three that's outside. It's, that, it's the mirror image. Yeah. This is a really, this is a really good sign for you, Virgo. And this, you know, I, I may never have to read another uh, a, a Virgo again. I may never do another tarot reading for Virgo because I feel like, or at least for a while, because this is, this is a very good sign. This is a very good milestone for you. The, the presence of these cards, the absence of the major arcana, show that you have reached a milestone in your spiritual work. Now it's time to implement all of that you have learned into the real world, right? And so we're taking what was a four, we're shaking it up, and we're creating the six, okay? It's very alchemical here, right? You're taking the kind of, um, you're taking the, the base metal, you're doing some, you're, you're taking it apart, you're purifying it, you're rearranging things, and then you're just putting it back together, but you're making gold, right? And the sixes, interestingly, are, all the sixes are, are associated with the sun, and the sun is that spiritual gold. So you are making gold. Maybe, maybe the six of pentacles is literal gold. You are making wealth, right? You are making wealth, at least wealth as it, as it applies to you, as, uh, with the meaning that you apply to that word, wealth, right? You're, you're, you're creating gold, right? I don't think you're minting money, but you are um, you're creating spiritual gold, you're creating emotional gold, you're creating physical wealth in your life. Okay, now uh, that brings us to the question, what does wealth mean to you? You know, what is your idea of just the perfect, the perfect day, the perfect wealth, just the snapshot of that perfect moment? If there was ever like, you know, think back to your memories, what was that one day that you experienced that just seemed perfect? Like everything was perfect. The way you woke up in the morning, the weather was perfect. You felt perfect. Not too good, not too bad. Everything was just blissful. Everything was just kind of shining brilliantly like this card does. Yeah. And it was just that, it was just that perfect day. Right? What, is, what were the elements of that day? Try to remember what those feelings were. And let's see if we can see if we can make more of those. Yeah. Uh, okay, mystery card. Let's do that now. We're going to select one random card from the Pamela Coleman Smith Tarot Pack. And this card's going to go down here. Tiny Bob Ross is going to sit on that for us. Um, how much do you want to bet that's going to be a major arcana card? Um, because there's always some spiritual work that needs to be done, but not right now. Right now, we've got all of this. If you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. We're going to do it together. We'll make it a group exercise of intuition. I bet you will get it right. Okay. So, um, we've got fire, water, water here, and then we've got uh, our earth energies, right? And so, that's, that's really, that's very, very good. Um, we've got just a little bit of the fire. You know, and I think the fire really, because it's it's kind of coming next, and it really is like we get this, we get our environment kind of fixed. We make these changes in our lives. We start implementing. We start kind of. It's almost like we're we're going out, and and maybe this is something you should do. Go out to the dollar store or a thrift store or any store, and just walk around. Just take you know a little bit of time, take an hour, and just walk around a store and look at things. When you see something that shines, now not doesn't have to literally like shine like it's a piece of crystal or glass or something. When you find something that really looks special to you, that is speaking to you, something that looks a little bit more, well, shiny than the rest of the stuff, right? Um, buy that thing. And again, go to, a, go to a cheap store, like a dollar store or something. Go to Goodwill. 
and just find that one thing that speaks to you. It could be a little trinket, it could be a little figurine, it could be just a little tiny cross or a little bowl or a little teacup or something. Um, find something that feels magical to you. Buy it, take it home. Put that somewhere in your house. Put it on your altar, put it on your nightstand, put it on your coffee table, whatever, right? Maybe it's a piece of jewelry. Maybe it's a keychain or something. Maybe it's a piece of clothing. Something that feels magical to you, okay? Because what we're really doing is there's this two of, of pentacles behind us. And this, I think, was really that, that moment, and maybe this moment is occurring now, where we have a little bit of say over our environment. And we can change things. If we don't like something, let's, let's rearrange it. Let's redecorate. Yeah. Um, so we're on this, we're, we're using this metaphor of, of rearranging furniture, redecorating uh, in our lives. Reminds me of a 21 Pilots song, to be honest with you. Um, I did hear that um, Tyler Joseph is a, a big fan of the channel here. I don't know if that's true. I heard it from a friend, but, you know, shout out to uh, 21 Pilots. We, um, we're trying to make our environment a little bit more reflective of how we feel inside because we know that the, our environment around us, how we keep our lives, is a reflection of our psychic state. You know, we can look around my tarot table here and we can see that, you know, I might need a little bit of organization. I might have to declutter a little bit. And I do feel that way psychically a little bit. I, I want to get a little bit more organized. I'm kind of a minimalist anyway, you know, at heart. Um, but the two, of, the two of pentacles is us realizing that, that our, that our external environment reflects our internal environment and vice versa too. If you walk into a room that is just hectic and chaotic, don't you feel that way a little bit inside? I think Virgos especially are very sensitive to that. And that's why you like things to be very orderly and kind of tidy, I guess. Um, as do I. You know, I'm a Virgo rising, so that probably explains this in me as well. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel like there's this almost an anxiety when we walk into, like, say, somebody else's house. And they keep their house differently than we do, right? Or we may walk into a store or walk into a, any building or anywhere, and there's just too much going on. It just seems too chaotic, right? Even though everything might be clean and organized, but there's just too much of that, all of that stuff. There's too much light and sound. There's too much stuff on every surface. I like, I'm actually, you know, now that I'm, we're having this reading, I do, I like to keep my table a little bit more clear. There's a little bit too much stuff on here. Yeah, everything has its place. Everything is kind of organized. But for me, there's just a little bit too much stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, the two of pentacles is you kind of making that decision that we're going we're gonna to change some things. And this doesn't have to just be the furniture. That's the metaphor, right? It's everything in our lives. It's our, um, our beliefs, our thoughts, our habits, our responsibilities. Are you taking on way too many things in your life that now we kind of have to, we want to clear the table a little bit, you know? And we've done all this spiritual work, so now maybe we're realizing that, hey, I just got too much stuff in my life, and I want to calm things down. I want a little bit more of a tranquil psychic state and a cycle uh, uh, a tranquil um, external environment yeah so I feel like this is kind of one of those cycles of um, minimizing of purifying of cleansing for you of moving toward this kind of tranquility so we're clearing out things if it's either responsibilities or obligations or interests and hobbies and beliefs and just thoughts and preoccupations. We're trying to really, you know, um, clear away those that aren't essential anymore. And I don't think you really have to try to figure that out because I feel like that's what all this spiritual work was. Now you kind of know. Now it's just a matter of, of moving the boxes in and out of the house. Right of actually doing the physical rearranging and rescheduling and um, 
you know, it's it's like you know you know what you want already. You know how you feel. You've reached that spiritual discovery. Now it's just a matter of me putting this stuff in boxes and clearing some of the just you know doing the the physical mechanical part of the work, right? But that internal work is already done. We already kind of know what uh, what we want. Now it's just a matter of doing it. So we've got the four and the five of pentacles. The the things are actually moving. And I wonder if this is you know for, for, at least for the northern hemisphere, this is springtime. Right, happy, happy spring. Right, vernal equinox is upon us. Um, maybe it's that spring cleaning vibe. Maybe it's the fall cleaning for those of you down under, um, down under the equator. I mean, anyway, um, it's that time of like you know, let's bring in this fresh energy. Let's get rid of all these things. So I wonder if some of you are actually packing things into boxes, and decluttering, and going through those old closets, those old boxes, going through the attic or the basement and getting things cleared away. Maybe we're trying to wrap up a lot of old projects, old um, just things that have been lingering. That's like, well, one day I'll get to that. Well, no, now I'm finally going to fix the, the drip in the faucet or whatever. Maybe that's, you should fix that probably sooner than later. Um, but, uh, you know, writing that letter that I've been meaning to write, mailing that thing in that I've been meaning to mail in or you know, a lot of these kinds of things that are on our to-do list, our mental to-do list, our psychic spiritual to-do list. And now it's just, we just got to start checking them off. We just got to start doing those things, you know, and how much better will we feel once we get a lot of that stuff done, you know. Um, I feel like it is, well, one, with the six of pentacles again. I feel like you're creating wealth. You're creating this more streamlined and economical way of living your life that's going to allow you to really focus your energy on those things that bring you that kind of wealth that you want. Whatever that means to you. Okay. And for some of you, it could be love. We've got that knight of cups up here at the top. I think it's not only that, but... Um, a couple of things with the with the Knight of Cups. I feel like it is you not throwing stuff away, not putting things in storage, charity, donations, giving things away, using this as an opportunity to really give of yourself, right? To give your to give your gift away. Maybe literally giving away old clothes, donating things, but also having now the time and the effort and the energy and the will, the desire, the heart to volunteer, to do work, to help out each other. Yeah. Because we're not, we're getting out of that frantic kind of energy where we feel like we got a million things on our to-do list, but now we've knocked a lot of those off. Now it's only half a million. It feels like I've got a lot of free, maybe not free time. I've got a lot of free psychic energy now. So what do you want to do with that? Maybe you want to start creating. Maybe you want to start reading more. Maybe you want to start, you know, volunteering or painting or um, socializing more, spending more time with family, friends, you know, focusing on strengthening those bonds of love and intimacy that we maybe have in months past kind of fell out of touch with. Okay. This card is all about the giving and receiving of love and affection, giving from the heart and receiving into the heart in whatever form or fashion is appropriate for you. And I think that rearranging this furniture is going to, again, very feng shui. It's going to allow that heart energy, that love energy. It's going to allow this water to really move more freely in your space. Mental space, heart space, spirit space. Yeah as well as physical space. Now, I think that this is also very feng shui. You're putting some sort of water or fountain or something in your main living area, maybe by the front door or somewhere in the living room. There is a running water kind of thing. It seems like one of those rock fountains, you know, that you can kind of like buy on Amazon or whatever. Um, and you plug it in and a little trickle of water comes down the rocks. I feel like there's something like that in your house. Yeah, in that main living area, there's some sort of uh, water thing. Yeah. And I feel like that's very good. I feel like that's something, and maybe that's what you're finding at the Goodwill. 
That could be. I feel that gives you a lot of tranquility. I feel like that helps to uh, remind us of the psychic state that we that we choose, you know. And that's part of why I said go to the thrift store and buy that one magical thing that makes you feel that way, or that will not. It doesn't make you feel that way, but it reminds you that you feel that way, right? It inspires that feeling. It invokes. It helps you to invoke that energy into your life. It's just a tool. Objects are just the energy that they have the meaning, they have the energy that we charge them with. Okay. So I feel like you're surrounding yourself with a lot of things that inspire this kind of tranquility, this kind of love, this kind of feng shui flow of energy, this creative love, compassion, that knight of cups energy. Surround yourself with all sorts of things like this. And also fill your mind with those things. Fill your soul, fill your eyes, right? Look at things that inspire tranquility and beauty and harmony and love and all of these kinds of emotional, mental, psychic states that you want. Maybe you don't want to be tranquil, I don't know. But you, uh, you consume things that make you feel, that help you to feel that way, that help you to invoke that feeling, you know? Uh, we know that the foods we eat affect our physical state, also our mental and emotional, our psychic state too. The things that we feed our eyes and our ears, that, um, that affects physically how we feel, but also psychically, mentally, emotionally. Right? So we have to be very mindful of the food that we're taking in through all of our senses and every level of our being, right? Very nice. Um, you are making certain changes in your, you're trying to streamline your business thing. Uh, whatever you do for work, you're finding a way to be more efficient. And right now it may seem like there's a lot of chaos going around, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things kind of, we're renovating the building and it's just chaos, construction workers and saws and drills and hammering all day long. It's for a good reason. You're streamlining things so that you can make more gold, right? So that you can be more efficient and more economical. Okay, so there, there is very much a practical side to all of this. Let's move to the path of the serpent. All right, the eight of wands to start us off. This, um, what we're doing over here, all of the, everything we just talked about is allowing you a lot more freedom of your creative expression. Right? Um, this is really you now exploring a lot of different ways to be to be creative. And I feel like it's kind of, it's not even an intentional thing. This is just like a natural side effect of what you're doing on the path of the dove. It's going to give you so many new ideas. This is like rapid fire, idea, 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 creativity, creativity, just, just kind of pouring out of you. We can't contain it. And it's very diverse. There's a lot of different things that you feel inspired to do. Now, sometimes this card is a very anxious energy because now we've got all of these creative, I have 50 things that I want to do that I feel so passionately about now that I, all these creative ideas, you know, um, these innovations, maybe for business, for home, I have all these ideas for, you know, whatever. It can be, it can take us right back to the beginning where we just feel this kind of frantic energy. We feel like we've got too much stuff on our list, you know? And so I wonder if this is part of it too, that you have all of these things in life that you want to do, that you feel naturally drawn to and passionately. We've got to prioritize those. We've got to try to um, maybe narrow those down to, um, to maybe like the top three or something, right? We've got to find a way to kind of uh, to get that in order. Yeah. But this is a really, this is a good problem to have. Right? You've got so many great ideas. Well, which one do you do first? Well, we just need this tranquil. We need to streamline the rest of our life, perhaps, so that we can focus on this really huge, unbelievably great creative project that you're going to be starting. And now, in the, in the position of the environment, we have the Knight of Wands. This is impulsive fire. This is fire that rushes off. This is you here in the Eight of Wands. 
you just grab one of these and you're off to the races. You're off and running. See that? The rider has that wand in their hand. They just picked one of these lightning bolts and they're running away with it, charging forward in this creative endeavor. In some ways, it doesn't matter which one you choose. They're all equally great, right? Um, and you're creating space in your life now where you can pursue these things or this one thing, one at a time, maybe, whatever it is. Uh, the fact that we've got a lot of court cards kind of clustered up here, this does tell me that you're, you're trying to keep um, a group of people organized, that we're trying to really set up a sit. Maybe it's your house. Maybe you've got a lot of roommates or a big family or something. But we're trying to kind of keep everybody on task, trying to give everybody like a schedule, some sort of an order, maybe like a, a, a chore chart or something, just to keep everything flowing, trying to get everything on the schedule, trying to automate everything. You got your bill pay kind of set up through the website. Everything's just kind of automatic. Everything's running by itself. You can step away. You have that everything streamlined. Yeah. So I feel like there are other people in your life that were just like trying to get everybody working autonomously so that this system, this household or this business or whatever, this life can function very smoothly without you having to go in and tinker with every single thing. When you have to, to um, do everything, well, that, it's, your whole day is filled, right? Because you're just going from one thing, tinkering, one thing, tinkering. And not like, not tinkering really, but just doing what you've got to do, hitting the button, right? Well, just get something automatic in there to hit the button for you. Um, but that also brings uh, other problems. If we automate our lives too much, and now I don't mean literally, but maybe a little bit of that. Um, if we streamline things so much, well, then we're not, are we really paying attention? Are we just kind of, are, is everything so streamlined and so automated that um, something could break down, something could be dysfunctional, and we won't even know? Right. Well, that's our fear, worry, and concern. That's the Queen of Pentacles here. We like to be hands-on because we want to be, we get, we get a certain peace of mind and a certain tranquility from knowing that I've looked over everything. You know, you've went and inspected every different department in your company and everything's fine. Yeah, you can sleep good at night, you know. So we've got to be aware of, we've got to find a balance with all of that. Because we want to streamline things to open up this creative uh, energy in us. But we also want to make sure that we can sleep easily at night, knowing everything is functioning properly. Right? I don't like automating my bill pay and stuff, because what if, what if something goes wrong? You know, I like to, to at least look at it and check in with things and make sure everything is going, going fine. You know? Um, and that's why I think, you know, I, and not to get it, it political or anything, but there's, we go to the grocery store and there's always these like automated teller machines and stuff, you know, or like the, um, uh, not the automated teller machines. Um, well, that too. But the, uh, the self-checkout, you know, like at the grocery store. And every single, I'm not kidding you, every single time I've ever in my life tried to use one of those things, the little red light goes off and I have to wait for a human being to come over to help me. Right. And this happened every single time, especially, I mean, I'm kind of showing my age here, but back in the day when they first came out, I was like, oh, this is cool. Every time I would use it, something would go wrong. And I don't think it was user error. I'm pretty savvy with technology, but every time, you know, and that just kind of led me to think, well, we're never going to replace human beings. There's nothing like a human touch to things. There's nothing like a human that could come in and maybe they're not tech savvy at all, but they're they're able to interact with us. There's a certain something that we get from being with another human being that we don't get from interacting with a machine. Um, and right now, especially with all this AI stuff and all the chat GPT, all that kind of craziness, uh, this is kind of off topic, but I'm kind of torn between that. I'm a sci-fi nerd. I love technology. I love AI. I love the whole Google ecosystem. I love the, um, the chat GPT stuff. It's just so fascinating. I can't wait till we're all taking vacations to Mars, you know? Um, but at the same time, it scares me. At the same time, it, it worries me for my daughter, too. She's, well, she's going to be four in a couple months. 
And um, I'm starting to feel kind of like an old fart because it's like I'm, I'm starting now to, to understand my grandmother. She's like 93 years old where she doesn't like technology. She still has a rotary telephone. She has a really long cord on it so she could go sit on the couch and talk to her friends. But she's got the rotary dial, you know, telephone. She doesn't want technology. She's never used a computer. Uh, we had to give her a little flip phone to keep in her purse so when she would go out, if she needed anything, she could just make a phone call. And I'm starting to feel that way too. I love technology. I love science fiction. I love all of this stuff, space travel. I've always been obsessed with, with outer space and with technology. Um, but I'm torn, you know, torn with it. So anyway, that was uh, a bit of a digression. I didn't mean to, to do that. We're up here with the Queen of Pentacles. And this is really, this is our, our, our fear, our worry and concern, I think. That um, if, there is, if we're not looking over everything, then something's going to slip by us and cause trouble. Right? That something is going to kind of fall into disarray or disorder and it's going to it's really going to put a stop to everything. And then we're going to have to take all that time that we thought we saved to fix the problem. So we need to really, you know, we need to be careful with it. It's about balance, right? It's about balance. But we should streamline and economize and automate those things that we can to save ourselves that, that time. So to allow us the opportunity to do more of these things. Now, I don't know what kind of work you do or what what you occupy your, your days with. Um, but the message really here is that you know, you know what kind of feeling tone, emotional environment you want. You know what kind of creativity you have within you. Now it's really about moving things around, again, rearranging the furniture to create space for yourself. Okay, that's, that's where we are. And we're ending with this Prince of Cups. This is you living authentically. This is you now um, kind of feeling like you are able to live your truth and be yourself and express yourself in the ways that you that you have discovered. You have all this, you've done all this spiritual work, you've made all these spiritual attainments, this spiritual progress. Now it's time to translate that into living, right? To live that authenticity that you've discovered. And that's why I say it. I may not have to read for Virgo again for a while because I feel like you have that authenticity. You know what you need to do. And now it's, I just want to point you and say, get out, of the, get, get out of here. Go do it. Go live. You know, go create. Go be. First, let's look at the mystery card, though. Yeah. And I'm not trying to talk myself out of a job. I do hope you'll come back and watch another Virgo reading or watch your other placements anyway. Or cross-watch, too. You could watch for friends, family, significant others. Uh, as far as the mystery card goes, we don't really need anything else. So that's why I think this is going to be a major arcana card. What is the next spiritual task for you? What is the next level of your spiritual growth after we talk about these cards here? Um, maybe this will be the hermit. Maybe it's just your power card. Maybe there is, maybe, maybe we don't know what the next spiritual task is yet. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Oh, the high priestess. Um, I love the high priestess because right behind the high priestess, following the high priestess, she is leading you to that empress energy that absolute fulfillment of your best life, that paradise, that land of milk and honey, the absolute ideal, right? The utopia, personal utopia. Um, but she's asking you to trust in her. She's asking you to follow spirit, to follow not, not that spiritual work, not the external spiritual energy. Follow what your own spirit and soul is telling you. You have made these spiritual advancements, uh, ascension, this spiritual growth, these attainments, this spiritual progress. Now you have to trust in that part of yourself. You have to trust in your own spiritual light to lead you forward. Yeah, It's like you don't need any of the external stuff anymore. You don't need... Um, you don't need to look for God out there, but in here. Or goddess, deity, guardian angel, spirit guides, ancestors. 
follow the divine light that's within. This is really an amazing. We've had some really good readings for you lately, Virgo. I've got to say. We are going to do a quick extended. If you want to stick around, there's a link in the corner. There's a link down below. New readings for Virgo every Tuesday and Saturday, but I am here every day. You can come see me again tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Uh, check out my wife's channel. She does tea leaf readings. Her channel is Ula Tea Leaf Readings, U-L-A Tea Leaf Readings. Marvelous stuff. Uh, I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.